This will be a demo of the projects database for designing and building theme parks. Notice that it's been redesigned to fit on an iPad, even though I still mostly use it on, an, on a computer. iPad's great for out in the field or out at a vendor, vendor's office when you're checking things, but I prefer to input stuff on a, on a real computer. You can use Mac or PC. And maybe I don't like iPad just because I'm old. At any rate, a couple things to note before we get started. I've had to create these demo shows, so there's not as much information as you'd find in a normal show, and while I'm writing them, I'm very sarcastic, so be prepared. Also, the graphics on these um, uh, pictures and stuff are pretty limited. I'm a technical director, so I don't do graphics that well, and I haven't spent that much time on it. At any rate, let's get started. So this is the home page that you land on when you first open the database. If you click on any one of these, you'll go to more information about that. Before we do that, I'll show you up in the left corner here, we've got a show database map, and that'll give you the basics of how this thing is set up. So if you get lost and you're trying to figure out where to go, that's a good place. Um, basic navigation flow. First you create a project, then you create attractions for that project. Then you create arena, or areas and scenes within the attraction. And then you create elements within those scenes. And then from there you figure out what your facility impact is based on your elements. And those go out to the GC. So get a little more detailed into it. You've got your project layout. Each one of these, these squares basically is a table, a database table. And if you don't know what that is, think of it as being similar to an Excel worksheet. So this Excel worksheet has all your information about the various projects you have. Um, and within each one of these projects, you've got master specifications. These are like your general performance specs, your CAD specs, anything like that you can store here. Project drawings, so these are your site-wide uh, layout drawings site power options so if you're working in China you've got a specific set of power options that you can use there if you're working in the US or Japan or wherever you may be um, you set up what your power options are for the site here and those will then play out when you're filling out your facility impact and makes it easier to make sure that nobody makes a mistake on what's available um, Okay, go back up to here to attractions. Uh, you can access the master specifications from the attraction list as well. And the specifications show up, you can tag them in the elements so that you can say each element needs uh, which specific specification. We'll get into more, more of that in, a, in another video. Uh, so you've got attractions, all the remaining drawings for the attraction, whether it's specifically for a scene or an element, goes into attraction drawings. Uh, then you've also got shipping. You can track your crates and which crate, you know, the number of the crate, what the packing list inside is, what date it was packed up at the shop, what date it left, when it reached uh, the shipyard, that kind of stuff, all the way, tracking it all the way to its destination. Budget funding, so if you're getting funded in multiple phases, like first concept and then DD, you can track it here. And that goes into your basic budget here for the attraction. And within your budget, you've got a place to do estimating and a place to track your contracts. So you can track your invoices, when they came in, when they were paid, that kind of thing. And where you actually stand versus uh, um, what, you're, what you had budgeted and what you had estimated. So we go back up into areas and scenes. The scenes would be like your your pre-show and your main show. You maybe have five scenes in your main show and then your post-show. And, and you've got other areas like your electronic equipment rooms, your mechanical rooms, things like that. You set all those up here. And then you break out what the elements are in each one of these areas. So you've got your basic information in the element, such as your uh, technical requirements and creative description and a little picture or representation of what the element is. 
and then you've got all these tables underneath the functions for each element a queue list that you can use for rough programming integration requirements and how this integrates with other vendors and possibly the facility but most of that's usually done down here in the facility impact um, specifications so these are what we just talked about and then your equipment list um, what equipment makes up these element lists once you have that equipment you know what your facility impacts are so then you create those and divide them up into power fluids and gases and miscellaneous and these go to the general contractor or to their subs so that they can actually get the site ready for you to, to install. Okay, let's go back to, oh, let me show you record structure real quick. It's pretty simple. Each project can have multiple attractions. Each attraction can have multiple scenes and areas. And each area can have multiple elements. So, let's start. Each one of these major sections, jump back here for a second, projects, attractions, areas, and elements, each have a home page where you can just select items from a list. They have a um, view page. So on the view page, you can click into stuff. You can resize as well. But you can't change information on this page. That keeps you from accidentally changing information when you're just perusing. If you hit the edit page, you see it looks a little less slick, but this is where you actually enter data. And then if you want to review the data across multiple things, in this case it would be projects, you can go to a full list. And that gives you all the projects in a spreadsheet type of system where you can resize these, move them around, whatever. And we'll get into more of that later. But each area is set up like that. so. This is your project information. We'll go into attractions. These are all the attractions for that project. We'll pick a, an attraction. And here you've got your information for the attraction. And then we'll go into scenes and areas. This is your list of scenes for that attraction. We'll go to chainsaw welcome. Here you've got your basic stuff. You can, you can uh, put in chunks of the script if you want or the whole script but it makes more sense to put in chunks that have to do with each area and then as you're detailing this out you can refer back to it so if I'm on the edit page this is where I start blocking out usually putting in my putting in my basic information I just type something go to the full list and here's the nonsense I typed, but basically you start you start it from the scenes generally. You don't have to. You can come straight here, and this is the full list. As you can see, there's there's a lot of data here, and you can move these around. So depending on what you're working with, you can. If you want to, I'll get into what all these mean in another video. This is just a quick review, so. Uh, we can also go to elements, the element home page, and do the same thing. So if I want to pull up, let's say, Chainsaw Bungee. So this is where most of your data sits. Let's go to the edit page, and you'll see this no longer really fits on an iPad cleanly, but like I said, most of the time when I'm entering data, um, I'm doing it from a computer. So here you've got your creative description technical requirements and these you can pull them up uh, the pad think of it like a pad of paper so you can open this up resize it if you got a lot of data you can scroll up and down on it makes it easier to work with data also let me show you one other thing if you're checking all your creative descriptions you can go from one to the next to the next here just gives you an easier way to to check them you can also do that from here but uh, it's easier if you're looking specifically at creative descriptions to just pull up all the creative descriptions and go through them. You've got your various tables here that we talked about. Um, also notice you can pull it, each one of these as an individual list and work with it that way. Uh, you've got equipment lists, same type of thing here. 
and there's more you can do. You can pull up all your equipment park wide and do comparisons of what you've got and make sure you've standardized. If you got one weird piece of equipment that doesn't match everything else, you can you can suss it out there. We've got facility impact. Again, you can go to each one of these lists, um, put this information in. We'll go through how to do all this in another video. When you get to fabrication, you're mostly just tracking milestones and tasks. And this I keep separate from the schedule. <coughs> the attraction schedules or the project schedules are usually anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks, even up to a couple of months behind. So this is what I do to keep track of what I have to get done on any given day. Um, you can set up your queue list here. Installation is the same thing, tracking milestones and tasks. And the same with closeout. Now notice, and for fabrication and installation, I put up fat pads and sat pads, site acceptance tests. And this is a default, since the vendor usually comes up with that. But if they don't, um, this just takes your function list and your equipment list and a couple other things in a node area. You can print this out and tick off pass or fail. And uh, then you can make a copy of it, scan a copy, and put it in here. I also got a basic training form that does the same kind of thing. Who, who trained, who was trained, and any notes you have. That way, you scan them, put them in there. A couple weeks later, when the techs can't figure out what to do and said they weren't trained, you can go back and show them this. And you still have to train them again anyway, most likely. At any rate, um, a lot of this information, obviously not the closeout installation fabrication, but the rest of this shows up on a uh, element data sheet that you can use in your scope of works. And the facility impact, you don't necessarily have to put that in there. There's ways to put it in the table or take it out without deleting the information. But it's good to put it in there even in your scope of works because if you've already given a list, a preliminary list to the to the general contractor, it's good to let the vendor know what that list was, what your assumptions were, and they can correct it from there. So if we take a look at what this report actually looks like, we we'll use a standard report. We'll hide the uh, budget data. I'm going to expand this out so we can, act. well, first let me show you this. I do it in a small size because usually when you're reviewing this, you you already know what's in there. You're not reading the data. You're just looking for the formatting and making sure that looks okay. So in this case, I'm going to increase the size of this. Oops, here. Get my button straight. So you can see what's going on. So we've got all our basic information here. You notice there's a watermark in there too that we can add and remove or change. And then we've got our individual tables. And if if one of these tables has no information in it, it won't show up on this sheet. It's left out. That way you don't have print out um, a lot of extra pages and a lot of sheets with no information in them. Okay, that's your quick view of this. We'll get into the individual requirements of how to do all these things in other videos. Thank you.